Koppel, host of the Time for Coffee podcast, where you get firsthand career advice into the jobs and industries that interest you the most. And before we start today's show, I have a quick favor to ask you. If you haven't already, I'd be incredibly grateful if you give us a rating and a review on iTunes. And if you're like me, you need to do it now because you'll forget later and because it's the best way to help others who may be in search of career advice to find this free resource. So press pause if you haven't done it and do it right now. I'll wait. Thanks so much and enjoy today's show. Hey there, Java Junkies. Welcome to another K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. By the way, K-Cups come in three sizes, single, double, and triple shots, or roughly one minute, five minutes, or ten minutes in length. So if you don't have time to throw back an entire caffeinated career conversation, these K-Cup mini episodes of T4C can give you a quick caffeinated fix, whether you're on the go or you only have a few minutes to binge. So grab your mug and take a chug, because it's time for a caffeinated career triple shot K-Cup with my guest, AJ Eckstein. And you may have already answered this next question, AJ. But I try to ask all of my guests what the best career advice is that they've gotten. It could be the network when you don't need to network. But I just want to ask you that question in case you have other career advice you want to share. So I think you you definitely hit the nail on the head in that me looking back on my life, if I networked earlier, I think just more opportunities would have come my way. Not that I regret anything, but I think that You don't need to start networking as a junior or a senior in college. Network as a freshman. And you don't have to go crazy because you're not eligible for a lot of opportunities. But just start to put yourself out there. Go to some light recruiting events. Start to see what's going on. Who are the main point of contacts? How do people interact with recruiters? So on and so forth. So definitely, as you said, if you can network earlier, it's also going to be more organic because you're not eligible for opportunities yet. So networking earlier is fantastic. But I would say... For myself and and doing a ton of career coaching, hosting the final round, being a content creator now on LinkedIn, I would say that not enough people work on building their story and doing it in a very authentic way. So you can't just come in as a general story or a general brand because you will get branded throughout the recruitment process and you need to make a name for yourself. And I don't think that you need to do what everybody else is doing. So if we go back to my life, my example, I was so focused on the two organizations that were essentially feeder organizations to get into consulting and banking that I didn't really look at what I was super interested in. And I remember that when I was graduating, I learned more about one of my friends who worked in the the tech world, and he was part of a 3D printing organization. And they literally build limbs or prosthetic limbs for some people who don't have limbs. And they literally build, it was the craziest thing, they build like an Iron Man arm, prosthetic limb. For people. And I'm like, that is so cool. But it's not as well known. It's a new organization. And maybe it's not well known to the consulting companies. But looking back, yes, these these organizations are are fantastic, the ones that are like consulting organizations to get into consulting. But don't be afraid to pave your own path and really follow your interests, whatever that may be, even if it's not super relevant to what you want to do, because you can always make it tailored. If I am now the president of this 3D printing, student organization. I can use that as leadership to get into a company. And also it's just super rewarding. I think you come in and you brand yourself as, yeah, I'm the one who builds these Iron Man prosthetic limbs for these people who don't have the resources to do it. So I would say, again, the two biggest pieces of advice that I could share with the, the Time for Coffee audience, number one is really think about your story. And if you don't have a story yet, do more thinking and then start to build a path of what would be additional items to add to your story. Number two, as you're thinking about building that story, that brand, that personal, authentic brand, don't be afraid to swim upstream. I I always give the example or the analogy of a salmon. And a salmon does not follow the river, what all the other fish are doing and swimming down, let's say to the right. Don't be afraid to go left and really pave your own path. Because when you reach out, when you look you up on LinkedIn, and you're this, again, going back to the same example, you're this president or the VP or someone who started an organization that is crazy unique and it's never been done before, that is a huge value add 
compared to just doing what the next 10 people are doing to break into the same industry? A hundred percent. By the way, the final round is in the top 1% most popular shows out of over 2 million podcasts around the world. Time for Coffee is in the top 2%. So my friend AJ, who's been a podcaster now for just over a year, is crushing it, totally crushing it. AJ, I just have a few final questions, one of which is, what are some of the biggest mistakes that so many students make when it comes to applying for jobs at various companies? And what can they start doing right now to level up? There are obviously a ton of mistakes. And and I've been fortunate to, as we've interviewed tons of recruiters now, we always ask what are the biggest mistakes? Because they light up and like, oh my gosh, thank you so much for asking because there are so many mistakes that I want to help fix as the candidates. But I would say if I could put it and summarize it into two main buckets, the first one is your applications or recruitment strategy is just broken. And the reason why is because, and I, I don't want to say that LinkedIn is, is at fault for this. They made the application process much easier. But the issue is that with the new additional option for easy apply, And it's literally the button is easy apply if you go to the jobs page on LinkedIn. Is it so easy to apply to a job that people think, job seekers think that I could just press easy apply 500 times in 30 minutes? And guess what? I just applied to 500 jobs. But if you take a step back, you have to realize that you need to take a targeted approach. And you can't apply to 500 companies and expect a result. Why? Because A, you need to document everything because you need to follow up. And B, you need to start building your network at these companies. Yes, you can get into the front door, but why not get into the side door through either a referral or asking people how you did something and you can't network with five people at 500 companies, right? So that's the first thing. And really, I would say have a targeted application strategy and try to focus on, let's say, 10 to 20 companies and really double down in a certain industry versus 500. That's the first thing. The second thing is outreach again, is done on a very wide scale in that I'm going to send, maybe I'm not even going to send a note. I'm just going to hit connect with Jerry, with Sebastian, with Rachel, and expecting them to either accept my connection request or reach out to me. That's not how it works. So again, similar to the companies that you apply to, you take a targeted approach, your outreach strategy should be very targeted as well. Always add a note if it's on LinkedIn, but also I always think in the best piece of advice I could share, because I always, people reach out to me and there's, I don't answer everybody, but the people who I do give up an hour of my weekend to free to just really help and mentor them are the ones who did their research, who took the time to research me and who actually I can tell did not write or use a template. And it's very obvious. And I'm sure you are probably, I can see you shaking your head as well. You know, if I send you a template, it's very obvious, but if I send you a very thoughtful outreach message, researching you, your background, maybe your time at uh, CNN and what you've done with XYZ thing, it comes off as very authentic. So use that for your outreach strategy and always the best way that you can almost guarantee or maximize the chance of response is if you were on the other side of the table and you were crazy busy, what would make you smile when you read a response or a message? And what would actually make you respond? Even if they don't have time, that's totally fine. People will respond if you spend a few minutes actually sending a thoughtful message. And I always say the biggest trick that I use with research, it's very similar to how I research a podcast guest, is go on to the activity section of their LinkedIn profile, look at the posts that they've made. And again, some people maybe have zero posts. Other people will be content creators. They post 10 times a day. And the ones who do post a lot, try to find something they recently posted and use that in your outreach message. So for instance, let's say that you just made a post about how you hate professional sign-offs, for instance, sincerely or best or thanks. And you say that people should sign off as kind regards, let's say. I would literally use that in my outreach message. And then they're going to know that it's too tailored to not know that it was from my most recent post. And they know they're going to smile. They're going to lighten up and say, wow, they did the research. So I love doing that. Does it take more time? Yes. And does it work every time? No. However, there's much better chances if you do this than just sending a hi blank, I'm AJ, I went to this school, 
do you have 20 minutes to chat? I don't know you. I don't owe you anything. There's no relationship built. It's transactional. I'm probably not going to help you. So those two things, again, the application strategy, the outreach strategy, being very thoughtful and targeted are great ways to increase your chances of success. Thanks for tuning in to this K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. If you want to listen to our entire caffeinated career conversation, please check out the show notes for this episode. Thanks so much for listening to this latest episode of T4C. And if you're interested in learning more about my coaching services for confused college students and recent grads, feel free to check out the Time for Coffee website under the coaching tab at time, the number four, coffee.org or text me at 202-236-5712. That's 202-236-5712. Thank you.